All right, everyone, first and foremost, if I look a little bit redder than normal, it's not the lighting. I've actually got a mild sunburn over uh, large parts of my body because for the last two days, it's been sunny and warm, which is something that I haven't seen since, <laughs> you know, November when we had a warm spell. So I've been enjoying it and gotten a lot of gardening done. There will probably be an update either today or tomorrow, by the way, for people who are into that. But we've got to talk about this article that I saw from the USA Today is actually actually quite funny. Uh, where the USA Today is recognizing, hey, the Democrats have a, a problem with their platform because all they're running on is Trump is bad uh, and Trump's approval is hovering around where Obama's was. Trust me, it's gonna be higher than Obama's was during the midterms. Now, the Republicans, their big problem is in the House. The difference, of course, being in the Senate, assuming that Trump is a little bit ahead of where Obama was, they could gain a couple of seats. The Republicans will actually come out smelling like a rose if they gain a single net seat in the Senate, regardless of what they lose in the House, unless the House flips. I don't predict that the House is going to flip. I think it's going to be underwhelming. The Democrats are going to come in under the mark uh, and look very weak. That's actually good, better longer term for the Democrats. It'll help them uh, undergo their own paradigm shift. They will reform as a party. They might become worth voting for, for like people who aren't into the social justice high tax thing. Like they might actually become a liberal party again and become, you know, worth considering voting for on a national level. If they win too much in the midterms, the, the DNC will be controlled by neoliberals in 2020. They'll be a complacent party and they're going to have big problems. Trust me, it'll be a wash. They won't win 2020. Um, but uh, I'm going to take you through here, because there were four individual suggestions here that were made uh, as replacements. And, and the idea of having a platform that's policy-based, is that's really good. It's a novel idea. They should listen to the USA Today on this one. The problem is that the four things that they're pointing out here are themselves, I wouldn't rate as necessarily the best things to run on. So I'm going to take you through these, because it's pretty funny. Now, number one being potential cuts to Social Security. In a million years, I wouldn't imagine that Trump is going to cut any funds from Social Security. He might go after other uh, uh, programs, but it was Social Security gets wrongfully called an entitlement or welfare or something. Since you've already paid into Social Security, it's not welfare, it's not redistribution, it's just a sort of collective fund. That being said, I don't think we should have Social Security. I would eliminate it entirely, and I'll tell you why, because I think people are better at managing their money, or should be, uh, than the government is, and it's an inefficient program, because you need to pay bureaucrats to administer it. It's almost a Ponzi scheme, when you think about it, because of the, the boomer generation being quite large, then shrinking, you know, number of new people are propping up a lot more older people. It's going to become an economic problem down the road. It's going to get worse. I don't anticipate it even being around. Like, I'm, I'm, uh, trust me on Social Security. I am not one of those people dumb enough to rely upon, hey, when I'm old, I'll take the peanuts that the government gives me as a, as a, as a, you know, a payback for all the money I paid in, which will be less. I'll probably get less out than I paid in anyway. Uh, especially adjusted for inflation. The government will shortchange me, but I'll make ends meet. No, I'm trying to set up passive income. Look, I'll have a literary catalog. I can take it from Amazon to anywhere else if I really need to, but at least I'll have passive income. Uh, invest, <laughs> get a mutual fund, do something. Don't rely on the government because the government is the worst at managing money, as we maybe see with the debt. I don't expect him to cut Social Security, telling people, oh, the Republicans are coming for your Social Security. Trump will come out and he'll make mincemeat of that argument. And he'll be the one doing it primarily. The other Republicans will be like, if they really feel it's endangering their run, they'll say, oh, and if he tried to do that, I would vote against it. Yes, I would respectfully disagree if Trump tried to do that. They'll distance themselves if they have to. Never Trumpers or uh, the pro-Trump crowd too. Number two is more pollution. Uh, Trump gets applause when he goes into red states and brags about all the regulations he's rolling back, but you know it's going to make like smog and pollution stuff. Okay, uh, and the suggestion here, let's see some smoggy TV ads around this. Uh, the 1970s called, they want their liberal policies back. Looking around here, the average American doesn't see a heavily polluted landscape. Maybe back in the Nixon era, that was something you could run on. I don't think that that would work, especially you've got to realize a lot of the seats that Democrats have to defend because they're defending two to one in this election are in areas that they're not going to give a shit. They want those jobs back. Trust me, if they're looking at, hey, we can reduce regulations a little, but it means a little bit more smog, they'll take the smog at that point because they're like, oh, otherwise there's no community. 
There's no jobs here. The, the one factory we had, yeah, okay, a little bit of smoke came out of it, but it helped the community. People had, you know, twice as much money as they have now. Now all they can do is do retail jobs. They have to drive 20 miles to do that because there's nothing here in our little one-horse town. That's how a lot of these, this is why a lot of these communities voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. The Democrats have to defend in some of those communities, not just go after Republicans for their seats. They have to defend weak Democrats that are in Trump territory. It's not going to work. Number three, gas prices up. Now, they admit, of course, that that has nothing to do with his particular policies. I will slightly disagree, and this is actually something slightly in favor, in favor of Obama. Obama was cast off as far left. But when it came to getting out of the way of the fracking and, and oil boom, he, he actually did a good job. He just said, oh, this is going to be an economic boom. It's going to help the economy. I'm just, I'm not going to do anything. He could have come out, stood on liberal principles, so-called. He could have gone full green peace mode and said, no, there won't be any additional exploratory drilling. He Instead, he ended up freeing a bunch of federal lands uh, for, for partial use, for exploration. Uh, granting licenses left, left and right for additional fields to be siphoned. Uh, fracking takes hold. He doesn't do anything about that. You remember when fracking was the big boogeyman? And now five years on, you don't hear as much about it anymore? Trying to revive that boogeyman to use in an election isn't going to work. Because a lot of those communities now, they have a lot of middle class factory jobs uh, in, in the oil sector so, or gas sector because of fracking. Well, they're not going to like it if the Democrats come after their jobs. They're just not going to like it. You will lose more seats if you use that strategy. This could have been written by a Republican who wants Trump to win. And then uh, number four is the trade war. Well, we basically won the trade war. Trying to scare farmers or whatever by saying, ooh, the prices will, uh, you, you won't be able to sell your crops, or this is going to hurt you, you know, all of these goods that you need from China uh, will be more costly. Well, you know, they're thinking, well, maybe I'll be able to afford domestic because of these tariffs. Maybe my goods will sell for more. They'll still be bought. I'll get more money. Then I don't have to buy Chinese products anymore. And Trump understands this. You're not going to win against Trump on, on the tariff thing. He's already destroyed the Democrats. Look, and here's the real problem. Trump has a couple of strong things he and the Republicans can use in the in the election this is why his approval has been going up number one case in point the tax cuts tax cuts are really really good if the democrats come out and say well these tax cuts are adding to the deficit so we've got to get rid of them so you're essentially uh, and trump will point this out very helpfully oh you want people to pay more you want to raise taxes what a bunch of of dolts you're you're idiots <laughs> and that will be a winning strategy all of a sudden his approval rises uh, further, because alienated centrists will get back aboard because they'll feel more alienated about uh, uh, the uh, never Trumpers or the Democrats. You got to understand one thing: there are a lot of people who right now feel alienated by Trump, but they will feel more alienated by the Democrats if the Democrats take the wrong strategy and go forward with it. That's probably some millions of voters. There, there's your centrists within the country: the dedicated, independent slash only mildly political slash very very slightly leans red or blue crowd all of these people will flock to the republican platform laying waste to the democrats if the democrats say hey we're going to raise your taxes or anything that looks like hey we're going to raise your taxes and then gun control notice that's not on this list i wonder why could it be because all the polls showing support for gun control were totally botched and totally fake total outliers that don't fit in with any other poll that's ever been conducted could it be because of that CDC study that was never released that actually sort of props up the NRA arguments? You know, one of those studies, by the way, that supposedly the NRA didn't want published, and yet now it's like, ha, huh, you know, it sort of bears us out now, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a reason why gun control isn't number five here. There's a reason it doesn't mention taxes or jobs. No, it mentions basically two of these are about environmentalism. Social security is a perennial issue that gets thrown around. It doesn't really affect much. The Democrats are the ones typically suffering from it. And the trade war, by the time of the midterms, China may have removed all the tariffs anyway. How do you know that we're not going to culminate the entire negotiation before the midterms? So then, well, then I guess you got three points, two of which boil down to Greenpeace. That's not going to work. In fact, I can't really think of a platform the Democrats could use very ably. They can't run just against Trump. The USA Today on this one is correct. Uh, at the same time, though, if you take up these particular issues, I don't think that it would work very well. And part of that is probably a good thing for the Democrats. Again, 
My prediction is the Democrats going forward, they have, they have at least a slim chance in 2020 if they lose the midterms. Because then if, if something goes wrong, number one, they can't be blamed because they're the total out party. If they retake the House and something catastrophic happens, Trump will say, look, the first couple years, things were hunky-dory. Now the Democrats take the House, look at how shitty things become, it's because of their obstruction. There will be at least some people who accept that argument. In other words, he doesn't get full blame for it like he would right now. If you were to have a depression right now, Trump and the Republicans would take 100% of the blame. They would then lose the House and the Senate and Trump wouldn't win in 2020 probably. If you have split government, if the Democrats suddenly conspicuously take the House and then talk about it forever, oh, we, you know, now we can stop the evil, bloated, tyrannical, orange, small-handed dictator, and then you have an economic problem or a war breaks out, Trump's going to blame it on you. At the very least, his partisan core will cling on in 2020. That's a pretty good chunk of the, it's probably about 40% of the electorate that will vote for him regardless. They're going to blame you for things. They're not going to blame him. And then they'll go forth online and make that uh, point to the centrists, getting some of them aboard. It'll just be like 2016, only probably more vicious. Yeah, you, you haven't seen vicious yet if you think that uh, having split government would work in your favor. I don't think so. I think it would lead you to get completely bombarded uh, from stem to stern. That's about all. Peace out.